This is not a day to be out, so I thought today we'd look at why it's so important to dry your firewood. People talk about boiling off the sap in a log like it's nothing, but it's massively important. And if we're aiming to be really good, really efficient with our wood fires, we need to understand this. We need to understand the concept of latent heat and why in wood burning it's so very, very important. Most heating fuels don't have a load of water in them. Firewood is almost unique in this and actually it's very unwelcome. So, a bit technical this one, but let's polish up our fire skills and really be master of our fires and enjoy good fires for the rest of our life. Right, let's have a look now at why it is so fantastically important to dry your firewood. Let's do some physics. It's a very long time since I did physics and latent heat, sensible heat, but boy is it worth knowing. Bought in two logs that most people I think would be happy to burn. The first one is a piece of elm at 22% moisture content, only just above the ready to burn threshold. It weighs two and a half kilos, five and a half pounds. The other one is a birch. Now this is 15% moisture content, weighs in at 2.25 kilos, about five pounds. Now I've looked at how much water is in each log. I just zeroed the scales. Now that is how much water is in that elm log. And that is how much water is in the birch log. Just imagine boiling all that away. So, we had two logs, the elm and the birch, both had a reasonable moisture content, the sort of moisture contents many people burn, but the difference in how much water each of them had was amazing. Let's just pick those glasses up. We got that much in the elm, that much in the birch, and you think, okay, it's a lot of water to boil off. Thinking in the old imperial measure to start with, it takes 180 BTUs of energy to convert ice into water. So that's the solid to liquid state. Ice into water, 180. Wait for it. Once that water reaches boiling top point, it takes 970 units of energy to boil that water off. That is just staggering. So let's keep this in perspective. When we're talking about boiling off the sap, the water, we are talking enormous energy. And remember that latent heat is what's changing a state of matter. There's no increase in temperature. So when you put a wet log on that fire, the log stays at 100 degrees while the water's boiling off. And if we think in metric for a minute, it takes 2.2 million joules of energy to boil away a kilogram of water. Just staggering. But just imagine you're bringing a frozen log in with whatever, 20% moisture content. You've got the, all the massive amount of energy to melt that ice, 334,000 joules per kilogram. And then 2.2 million joules to boil away the sap. So really, really, you're drying your firewood, not just for all the reasons that are trotted out, because it is a staggering waste of energy. Waste of heat energy, that is. Anyway, I love this stuff. <laughs> and I've watched loads of videos on this and loads of other things, and no one else talks about this, and it's so important. Okay, something I thought I'd mention right at the end is I keep hearing um, people uh, 
advising, encouraging us to use wet wood to slow a fire down or for overnight burning. Well, I can guess what you think of that, but I'll make another video sometime about the pros and cons of overnight burning. I think the subject is to be approached with real caution. Anyway, thank you for watching. A very different one. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I haven't done kitchen science for years. Oh, that's enough of kitchen table physics, I think. But I want it at all to look at our logs in a different way. Look at drying them with a fresh perspective. And I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and paraphrase one of the finest men who ever lived. Ask not what your logs can do for you. Ask what you can do for your logs. Dry them. <laughs>